Hey guys, I just wanted to do a video talking about OG Ananobi's defense from opening night because it was so good and it helped change the complexion of the Raptors defense, especially down the stretch. If you want the full look of what OG Ananobi's game was like, make sure to go to RaptorsRepublic.com. Louis Zatzman wrote a gamer, a feature on him after last night, and it's terrific. And make sure to subscribe as well. So here we are with OG Ananobi, who is all defense adjacent, let's say. A lot of people acknowledge him as one of the best defenders in the league. He has not gotten an accolade for it yet. Probably should have in 2019-20. It just didn't happen. This is the level of defender we're talking about. Most times he's referred to as the best defender on the Raptors. And he was fantastic wearing a lot of different hats against the Cavaliers. And man, I think I'm pretty good at my job, but... I. <laughs> If I was as good at my job as OG is at his, I, man, he, he was so fantastic last night. So let's jump into it, starting in the first quarter. So what we have is the Cavaliers trying to target an empty side pick and roll with Mobley and Garland. OG and Fred are on ball guarding this action. And OG tries to beat the outside because I think he's expecting Garland to go sideline. But he turns it back to the other side. Mobley flips that screen. And OG... When the Raptors were playing drop a lot to start this game to keep their guys back at the rim, presumably to help with rebounding against Mobley and Allen, OG gets back around, beats him to the spot, and contests a shot. This ability, this court coverage, that is not only OG's, but Pascal's, but Scotty's, right? These types of plays are what started to make Garland really uncomfortable and set the tone for how he put five turnovers in 13 minutes and was, a, I, I believe, a minus 10. So that's that's great off the jump. The second play, we have OG jumping in to stop that flash cut from Dean Wade. As we saw during this game, Kevin Love made quite a few passes into the interior of the defense. OG recovering to stop that cut, very important. But additionally, the play kind of filters into the other side. Mobley gets the ball. He's isolated around the baseline, right around the block. And OG hangs out in that area, knowing that he can jump a pass if he tries to go cross court. He does. And OG gets the steal. This, this is that core coverage type of thing. These are long limbs getting in lanes. It's very, very important. This one, we get that early pickup, forcing the dribble so they can't run clock. And the Raptors switch every single position, every single player out of that corner DHO. Coloco looks really good here, by the way, forcing the pickup. Extremely well done. And OG, after that switch, after forcing you know the pickup at half court, getting back, switching on to Allen and being in the gap to make sure that that little over the top pass wasn't there. He could contest that and then contesting the rebound, all that stuff, absolutely essential to the Raptors being switchable is that OG can go down and bang with Allen for a possession. And this one is probably my favorite just because of the impact on the game it has because of what the Cavs succeeded at. So it's important to know that Donovan Mitchell had a fantastic game and did so largely because he was able to get wide in the pick and roll and then make the Raptors adjust because he could beat them around the edge, and then started splitting down the middle, really causing a lot of havoc. The Cavs recognized this, gave him the ball in more staggered options, gave him the ball in more cross-screen options, and OG in this play is stepping with him, not only after he tries to get wide, but you can see he keeps it very tight at the level of the screen, so he can't split. This is a very, very big deal. He's taking away those options, both of them, and Fred makes a really good gamble to kind of rush him from behind and get the ball. So that was that was awesome to see. That's probably my favorite defensive play, even though it's not as bombastic as obviously this play in transition where we're looking at a guy. It's not LeBron versus, you know, Iguodala in the finals or anything, but this is a guy who tracks full court. He had an idea. He's keeping pace with Allen. And maybe he thinks, you know, Levert, is he going to try and get to Allen? I can probably jump that pass. But at, at some point, I think he realizes that, okay, he's going to try and take it to the cup. I'm going to meet him there. And he does. Massive block. And those types of blocks, they they people remember those. You know, we, we talk about footsteps. People hear footsteps when they go for that stuff. And this is these are the types of plays that create that impact. That, that trauma that people feel where they're looking behind themselves, right? And so, yeah, just a fantastic play. And this next one doesn't end up very well, but I think it's very, very good defensive process. So we have Scotty on Donovan. They go to the pick and roll. They switch it now. OG's on. They flip the screen. They switch it back. OG drops lower. And Scotty is now guarding Donovan Mitchell off ball. Donovan gets the back cut. And OG flashes up to stop that and get a hand on the ball. It kind of squeaks out. Donovan ends up getting a bucket, of course, but 
that's a really good play. That's not even really a gamble because the ball is so low, he can go trap it. And I think those are the types of decisions as the low rotating man that OG makes a lot of the time. And we're going to actually see more of it later, especially in the last minute of the game. Just tremendous. This next one is just poor Raul Neto. Uh, <laughs> when OG gambles, it's not really a gamble because he's his hands are so good, right? This is a guy who, if he's crowding your space, he's going to jut that arm out. He's going to get from like point A to point B faster than you can process, faster than you can try and pass out of it. And we see that. He just jumps a dude in transition. He, Neto thinks there's an outlet pass there. There isn't. There very rarely is when OG is blanketing you. So, yeah, great play here. Great read. And this next one isn't flashy or anything like that, but it's it's one that I love as well because we can see there's that screening action. OG drops out of it, and he's still maintaining that perfect balance of of not allowing the, the ball handler to, like, turn the corner, have a lot of space, anything like that, but also being able to get back in time to cover that space so that that drop pass over the top, the Steph Curry to Draymond that we saw for so many years that a lot of other teams emulate, that's not available. And kind of playing that that cat and mouse game and making sure that you're never getting got, that's something that OG has been fantastic at. And then the rest of the possession, we're looking at a guy just rotating properly. He steps in when a player is looking to, you know, throw the pass to that back cut. OG's, OG's present. And the Cavaliers know that OG is present. When Donovan is thinking like, do I take the angle here on the drive? OG's taking that step in. So we get that step back instead. All of this stuff, very heady off ball defense. And the Raptors obviously reap the benefits of it. And this last one isn't really OG alone. I think this is Pascal Siakam's play. You know, end of the fourth quarter, picking up all NBA level offensive talent. Donovan Mitchell, who's been torching everybody all game. Pascal... He plays that cat and mouse game, right? Donovan thinks he can slip that little pocket pass by him. Pascal gets back. But even so, if that ball comes through, OG is digging in. Fred is digging in. And these are the help side principles that the Raptors love. And based on how low that pass was, you think it probably would have gone well. And especially as we talked about with Raul Neto, Jared Allen isn't as small. But if OG is coming over to pressure you as you catch the ball or as you're trying to find a release valve to the corner or something like that. The odds of him deflecting it or getting a hand on something, very, very good. So another great read defensively. And then this last one, they they run that screening action. Mobley slips into the paint. Scotty is helping from, as far as getting into the paint, Scotty's helping from a, a weak position. OG's lower. He's not the low man, but he's lower, a stronger position. And while Scotty doesn't get there in time, and once again, these are the help principles the Raptors have. Throw everybody at the rim. OG gets there in time. Not only does he stonewall this play, and by the way, my apologies for the quality of this play. I, NBA Advanced Stats, the, the page, it had a gap in all the film and everything like that, so I couldn't pull it from there. So I, I pulled it from Joe Wolfond's Twitter, and, and Joe Wolfond is the best, by the way. But yeah, OG making that rotation, forcing Moby to pick up that dribble, it ends up going out to Chetty Osman. They reset into kind of like a, a little pitch play, and Chetty gets that offensive foul on Fred that we saw at the end of the game. And that's that's OG and Anobi. There's more stuff that happened in this game, but these are standouts, right? These are he's involved in screening actions. These are he's providing great help defense, great at the point of attack. That's what you love to see from OG and Anobi. This is part and parcel of what he's been able to do as a Raptor. And this is who he's going to be for a very long time. He's one of the best defenders in the league. And he really showed out last night. He was tremendous. It, it was an absolute treat to be in the arena working that game watching and uh, the crowd was definitely amped for that kind of stuff too so just wanted to focus in on OG how awesome he was in this game and uh, yeah thanks for tuning in with me make sure to subscribe to Raptors Republic go to raptorsrepublic.com subscribe the YouTube channel subscribe I've been Samson Folk thanks for kicking it with me and uh, yeah OG and Anobi I'll see ya <laughs>